Okay, I'm Tom Crosby from Burlington. Lived here all my life. 50 years ago, well, of course, the cars are gone, and there's a lot more people on the street now. And, of course, the different uh, sidewalk uh, stands, the trees. There never were trees on Church Street back 50 years ago. There might have been 100 years ago, but not, not while I was alive. There were no sidewalk stands? I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Stockholder, number one. Mr. Stockholder, do you have some plans for what you would like to do once you buy out Ben and Jerry's here? Why, yes, I've got some excellent plans. Well, first of all, I'd like to introduce some new flavors to you all. They're right over here. New flavors? New flavors. Flavors, flavors of the month. Flavors of the month. Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. Flavors of the month. The first flavor. Stockholder Brown Nose Crunch. Hold that, please. Thank you, Cal. Oh, don't protest. Don't protest. How, you? How about this one? Can't you keep it local dough? Oh! There's too much changeable and transformable social misery among ordinary people, among everyday people. And it might have something to do with the fact that their voices are not being heard at the highest level. And then Martin Luther King Jr. came out of a particular species, a specific version of the democratic tradition. Racism has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho. Racism has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho. Racism has got to go. <laughs> I'm Chief Homer St. Francis of the Abenaki Nation. I want to applaud the support and support the students who have stood up and spoken out against racism at the University of Vermont. You can't redo history. No, we can't do it. And no, we can't go back to harvesting salmon on the Winooski Falls. But we can change the future by knowledge, the past. And this is something we can ask the trustees of the university to do. It doesn't necessarily mean re renaming Ira Allen Chapel after Greylock, although that's not a bad idea but simply acknowledging that racism goes back a long way. You are watching television and you are growing sleepily. You are about to descend into a hypnotic state. Oh, let me start again. <laughs> Because too often we're perceived as just being the fair housing organization that's hammering the banks for discrimination issues. And frankly, empowerment zones, investment strategies, uh, uh, we just have a whole lot of. We made a list yesterday after John's bank office. has been good at working. Why don't we just walk on down yeah, this way sure. and talk to her? I just yeah, don't want to miss his bike. What I'm here to say might not sound good to the authorities. It's time for us to change our national priorities. Let's give the people more of a say about how we invest our taxes in the USA. Now here's one thing I'd really like to know. Where do you want your money to go? For nuclear weapons and Star Wars toys or to educate and motivate our girls and boys? I'm telling you, honey, we just gotta move our money. Gotta move our money. And the thing that aggravates me about this is that 72 other nations, not two, but 72, have found a way to provide family leave. Now, what this guy is saying is that America can't do what 72 other nations can do. I always thought this was a can-do country, and I'm going to give you a can-do administration on November 3rd, if you will stay with me. How do you think your helping your husband so much will affect the possibility of a female president sometime in the near future? Well, I hope that um, somewhere right now in the United States is a young woman or even a not so young woman anymore 
um, who will become president sometime in the next 20 years. Um, and I think that it will only happen because the woman who decides to do that will be brave enough to take the risks associated with being in public life and will be willing to really stand up and work as hard as she can um, to be judged on who she is um, and not be discouraged by some of the obstacles that still stand in the way of women doing work like that. It's no longer a problem of us just talking about program. We're talking about food and clothing and shelter. We're talking about the richest society in the world letting children go to bed hungry at night. This is not a battle that we're involved. We're involved in a war. And we need to take a look at this very seriously. I don't know what's going to happen right now. I don't, I'm, I'm very concerned that from the low intensity psychological covert war, we may go into an over war down there. Right now, the Mexican, Mexican military has 200,000 troops. Over 60,000 of their elite or in the state of Chiapas. Hace posible que el crimen se haga gobierno en México. Nicaragua, this is not Angola, this is not some small and distant country. This is our neighbor on the North American continent, uh, a nation whose, whose history, whose people, whose culture is deeply intertwined with our own. It's a nation of 100 million people, one river away. I'm Fred Tuttle. I'm Soren Smith. Nice yeah. to meet you. What, are you. what are you doing down here? Uh, I've come to talk to you about uh, this little campaign you're running here. Oh, well, that's a great campaign. Yeah? I, I hope I win. What are you going to do if you win? Go to Washington. Oh, yeah? So if you beat Senator Leahy, uh, what, what, what are your... I'm go, uh, Senator Leahy, is, I, I can't beat him. I don't believe him. I'm going to try it. What, what happens if you win the primary? What, are you going to run against Senator Leahy? Or are you, uh, are you just... I might be a little afraid, but I, I don't know. Really, I'm not, at this moment, I don't really, I'm not really sure whether I run against Leahy or not. Okay. So tell me how this all got started. I mean, why, why did you decide to do this? Oh, I've been home here all my life and never been anywhere on just World War II. I just wanted to go somewhere to get out and go to Washington, maybe, you know. What's, why Washington? Why would you want to go to Washington? It's all a bunch of politicians down there. No, it's worse than politicians. <laughs> I would, I'd want to change it a little bit down there. Uh, I remember, I don't know whether you guys do or not, but it seems to me that they sat in the balcony and then they would, they would jiggle. The kids would jiggle the, the backboards they that, did. Were, that were up on the balcony. So you come down, you take a shot, you go up for a shot, and the, and the rim of the basket would be moving like yeah. that. That was a part of the home court advantage. That was part of the home court advantage. Oh. Is that their own pictures? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of all our delegation, thank you for your hospitality and the hospitality of the people of Puerto Rico. It's been absolutely wonderful. You could not have done more for us. There were a lot of things that needed to be fixed. We had one of the most liberal criminal justice systems in the country that, that ignored the rights of crime victims and really trampled on them. And it was as a result of going to the legislature as a citizen advocate, you know, using up all my vacation time to, to be in the legislature to, to try to get changes passed, and then having so little happen as a result of all of the time and effort that I put in. And I, I decided that maybe I would be better off being in the Senate with a vote than being, um, being outside just with my voice. And that's why I, that's why I ran. And uh, during that 18 years, I followed Andy through, through uh, four radio stations and a TV station. And I'll follow Andy Parner anywhere. He's the, you know, the best, most sensible, soundest person on, on state and local politics there is. He's got a quick mind. He's got an instant grasp of the issues, understands numbers, and is consummately fair. Uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, huge numbers of people do not come out to city council meetings or zoning board meetings or planning commission meetings, not in Burlington, not in Essex Junction, not anywhere. But the fact that these programs are now televised gives local people all over uh, the county an opportunity to learn what their local government is doing, and that is a major, major, major step forward over what used to be the case. So in a sense, you're opening up government to far more people uh, than uh, used to be the case. Our forefathers did stand on Christian moral values and asked for you to do the same thing. America was founded on these moral values 
and America thrived back then. But today, just over a matter of, of a small period of time when they've taken prayer out of schools, they've done just these little minor things, but it's brought disease and famine to America now, such as AIDS. I am a mother of five. It would not be my choice to personally have an abortion. It doesn't belong in the platform of any party. It is in your heart and in your personal feelings that a woman's reproductive freedom comes into play. We don't legislate any type of moral or non-moral or whatever you want to call it, values. I do not support people who say women do not choose. It's a hard choice that women have chosen when they have a termination of a pregnancy. Keep them in your minds and keep them in your hearts, but not in legislative involvement. It doesn't belong there. Women have the right to decide when to bear a child. I'm Peter Frayne, and welcome to Point Counterpoint. Tonight's debate comes to you from Room 11 at the State House in Montpelier. The topic of tonight's debate is something that's been very much in the news this year and very much of a surprise, industrial hemp. So when women's liberation and gay liberation hit the streets in the 60s, we were all astounded. We welcomed the movement then and now, which is a movement for human rights and for basic freedoms. We welcome it today, we'll welcome it in the future, and continue the struggle. I think if it wasn't the Vermont Women's Celebration, we wouldn't be getting the support from the community that we are getting from the women's community. Um, and from not just the women's community either. Buzz, Crook, and Warble is our new exhibit here at the center. Be sure you don't miss the frogs and snakes. Here you have to take chances and have fun to discover new ways to think about the basin. For example, here you have to smell things. Yuck! Three and four years old, my father was dragging me with him to the various clubs he was playing at around New York City, the Village Vanguard, Blue Note, Bitter, and places like that. And my mother was at the same time was taking me to films. I looked at the statistics. Uh, where we are in this country and the level of fitness and I found out that although the adults have been doing really well the senior citizens and the, uh, the youth of this country have uh, been uh, really falling behind đó trong xe hơi hoặc chỗ quý vị làm việc cho dễ nhớ luôn luôn tự nhắc nhở là mình sắp bỏ hút. Kể từ nay, quý vị không mua một cây thuốc nữa mà chỉ mua mỗi lần một gói mà thôi. Bởi vì khi có thuốc nhiều thì quý vị sẽ hút nhiều. Where was Market's hardware store before they built that building? Across the road. You got it. <laughs> way to go. Way to get him. We didn't want to be rescued. <laughs> Give him a hat, her. You, you got a hat. Job. I, I huh? got so many hats. Yeah, yeah another bottle of banal. Banal. There you go. Oh my God! Right on the floor. <laughs> you don't knock the doors in here. Well, they're looking for some stuff. <laughs> you did great. I've done better.